On this Wednesday evening, we welcome you to Wichita, Kansas, the site tonight of the clash in women's basketball in the American between the visiting Bulls of USF out of Tampa. They make the trek to the Sunflower State to square off against these Shockers of Wichita State. So Bulls and Shockers collide for the first time here in 2020. Take a look, though, at the big picture here in the American Athletic Conference. Of course, UConn 7-0. But Tulane turning some heads as Lisa Stockton's bunch off to a 5-0 start. In fact, the Owls of Temple were 4-1. That was until Wichita State handed them just their second loss of the conference campaign. The Shockers, as a result, have now won three in a row. Red Hot coming back home for this clash tonight with the Bulls of USF. Of course, the Bulls fresh off their first war on I-4 clash with the Knights of UCF. Lincoln Rose along with Coach Angela Beck with you. And what a start. Entertaining it has been top to bottom throughout the American so far. Well, Wichita State, they returned seven of the eight of their top scores and, and they're battle tested and, and really ready to go. And USF, anytime you shoot the three ball like they do and rebound, it's going to be a game. Take a look at the keys for South Florida. How do they bounce back from that close rivalry loss to the Knights? Well, they've got to win the battle on the boards. That's what their that's what their snitch is. That's what they focus on all year. Hit their open threes and value each possession. Don't turn it over. And for Keitha Adams as Shockers, how do they make it four straight wins after an 0-2 start? Well, they got to get back in transition and cover those three-point shooters that are going to be, if they're in bounds, they're going to take it and be physical on the glass. Well, when we highlight these two teams tonight, youth will not be an excuse. First up, the sophomore at point guard leading the Bulls this year, Aliza Pinzon, the Italian. Well, she's the facilitator. She's the player that makes it all happen. 4.1 assists a game, but she's just coming off seven, seven three-pointers against UCF. She has a high basketball IQ, so look for her to be the catalyst. Yeah, matched her career high the other night with 23 points, and let's start continue with those super sophomores for the Shockers of course Trajana Colbert what a year well just coming off an injury and now she's starting to insert herself she was very aggressive she hit the buzzer beater that beat Temple by two and uh, she's just uh, coming up really strong now down that win in the final six seconds to continue the winning ways when we come back the Shockers will try to stretch the winning streak to four in a row Shockers and Bulls tip off is next We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. Introductions getting underway here in Wichita. Time for us to introduce uh, your starting lineups here tonight for these two squads. And again, some injuries for both teams, especially for USF, but no excuses. When you look, though, at both these teams, there is an international flair. Some players with international experience colliding here tonight in the American. Well, there's plenty of international flavor, and uh, both team coaches do a great job of integrating them and uh, having them work together. Beatrice Jordao missed a lot of that action last year. Back in the starting lineup for a seventh time this year, coming back from that stress fracture a year ago. And speaking of introductions, Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck with you. Time to introduce the third member of our crew, John Kurtz, on the sidelines. John? Guys, for USF tonight to snap a two-game losing streak here at Wichita State, a big key will be rebounding. The Bulls are the best rebounding team in the AAC, according to rebounding margin. However, head coach Jose Fernandez was not happy with how his team rebounded over the weekend against UCF. It's the only game this year in which the Bulls have been out-rebounded. He sees it as a key tonight and says last year, according to Fernandez, a big key to beating Wichita State was getting after them on the glass. Lincoln? Um, thank you. Of course, uh, a woman by the name of K.K. Wright had a little something to do with the success over there for the Knights out of Orlando. But yeah, two teams trending at the moment in different directions. It was an 0-2 start for these Shockers. We saw them in that struggle that ultimately came up just short here against Tulane. Of course, we didn't know at the time Tulane would win their first five games to start conference play. But since then, after losing to UConn and Tulane, it's three in a row. 
Well, Coach said that uh, East Carolina was a, a big win for them on the road. Once they got that win, then they were able to focus a little bit more on Tulsa and then uh, Temple. As we get underway, of course, the Bulls in green, Shockers in the home whites. Pinzon will bring the ball up the floor. Look for their offense to run tons of screens and lots of motion, but mostly picks everywhere. Trying to work it to that size and establish a post presence early on. Shot off the mark from Beatrice Jordan. Sophomore at 6-3 out of Portugal gets the start tonight. Well, for a team that leads the American in offensive rebounds and is ranked nationally, that's a good sign for them. Oh, a nice job getting the open look early over, and the first international standout is the freshman from the Czech Republic, Robin Sova, with the three. Well, that's a nice looking three. She's only shooting 25% from three point range, so it's good for her to get that down. But boy, is Coach Jose Fernandez really high on her future, and really all three of the freshmen who are putting in regular minutes thinks that they'll have quite the four years. Meanwhile, Shockers come right back in the post as Raven Prince is able to chime in and one. That's a nice little uh, step through move and a good finish for her, getting her involved in the offense early. Fifth year senior out of Oklahoma City. Started her career at Butler Community College. Now wrapping it up as a Shocker and that's a three point play for the home team. Well, she's the best defender for the Shockers, but when she can score, that's uh, double dish in it. So that's definitely what coach looks for. Again, Pinzon finally uh, back in the lineup as your point guard after Sydney Harvey had to step in, her fellow sophomore classmate. Shockers come up with a stop on one end. Ryan McCauley. And of course, for the past two decades in Tampa, Jose Fernandez has been your man leading this Bulls program, including no shortage of trips to the NCAA tournament and WNIT, a combined 15 postseason appearances to those two dances under his watch in these two decades. Well respected for his work ethic and uh, just his tireless way that he can put together a team in the best way possible. 15 footer from the Belgium native, the sophomore Seraphine Bastion knocks it down for her first two. Knocked down the triple a moment ago. A little mid-range turnaround will not fall for Brabinsova. That's a tough shot for Brabinsova. She was leaning back and didn't really have her shoulder square. I think that'll be Chineke who gets credit for the flat-footed block shot. But a turnover in transition. And a one-on-three break as it would not go for McCauley. I'm sure they like that one back, but you're looking at a team that's forcing 20 turnovers a game and every coach fears uh, that team because they do force you to turn it over. And we saw Wichita State really force the issue against ECU, a team that regardless of who the head coaches, we really associate with forcing turnovers, being aggressive. USF so far has just knocked down the one shot, the triple from Robin Sova. Since then, a 5-0 run from the Shockers. Robin Sova off the mark, off the glass. Some uncharacteristic early misses by them. Three on three, count the bucket, and perhaps another three-point play courtesy of McCauley. Well, McCauley, the last 12 games, has averaged 14.9 points. She's been turning it on, and I, I was looking at her stats. She had 19 attempts in the last game. I'm like, Coach, what do you think? Is that how many you want her to do? And she's like, yeah, she could take it anytime she wants. So that's a high quality shot. Did not play any organized basketball last year. The Grand Rapids, Michigan native has been on the radar of Keith Adams multiple times over the years. And finally, they got her into the program this year and an instant impact. So an 8-0 run for Wichita State here early on. You're talking about a team in USF, preseason pick number two behind UConn. Shockers were picked ninth in the preseason poll. And the Bulls have gone cold. That was a good block out by Shima Smith because they need to keep them one and done. McCauley with the dribble. And a nice job defensively by Robin Sova holding her ground, denying the baseline. 
Oh, no look dish. The point guard lets one rain down. Pinzon able to strike for three. Well, that's one thing that uh, coach didn't want to see, Coach uh, Adams. She wants them to make put the dribble down and drive, not, not let them get comfortable with that shot. And that time they didn't get to her quick enough. Even Jose Fernandez would love to see Pinzon drive to the hole more often, but doesn't mind a quality look like she had a moment ago. Shockers, though, not hanging their heads. Pouring another pair. Jose Fernandez will go to his bench in just a moment at the next stoppage in play. If you watch there, the posts do most of the screening in this offense, so they're continually screening a guard. A couple of steps from Chineke without putting the ball down. And of course, well, it hasn't been 20 years yet for Keitha Adams, the Oxford, Kansas native here back in her home state. This is year number three. What an impact in that very first year. And now slowly putting get together the foundation for a successful run like she had in El Paso at UTEP. Uh, Jose Fernandez could certainly recognize all the positives she's been able to accomplish over the first few years to redeveloping this program. Well, both of them only have high uh, accolades for each other. They both respect each other tremendously and know that they have a good coach that they're going up against here. Eyes up the floor from Pinzon. And just a little too tall of a pass for Manunga, but the Junior College All-American is undercut as the ball will stay here. Yeah, just a little bit of the push of the lower body. Didn't really need to do that, but she'll learn. And that was a matchup of two Belgium natives. Bastin called for the foul. Inside. As Jordan sees the ball stripped away, trying to clean things up. Nice job for Bethy Menunga. Menunga did a good job of just keeping the ball alive and finishing. She missed most of December out with a hamstring. She certainly was a factor in that game in Waco against the Baylor Bears when she put up the double-double of 16 and 12. Mind you, USF this year has scheduled both of the teams that were playing in the national championship a year ago. Dribble out of bounds for Robin Sova. It was not a cakewalk through non-conference play for Jose Fernandez's bunch. Well, what a tremendous preseason. I mean, Mississippi State, Texas, um, Notre Dame, and then, you know, and then the Cancun trip really tripped them up, you know. But it's a very young team. They've only won one on the road so far, so this is a good test to see where they're going to be. That one win came in conference play at Tulsa earlier this month. That's two def defensive stops in a row for USF, but they've, they've turned it over a little bit here, so they need to watch it. Room for improvement with the turnover there. Back over to the Shockers. Keitha Adams has won three in a row, looking to make it four straight, up by two. We don't just predict the future. We shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. Midway through the opening quarter, and it is no fluke that Wichita State has won their last three here in conference play, starting to find a rhythm and really making it tough on opponents, forcing turnovers. Again, the Shockers, they started 0-2, but have quickly rocketed up the standings. Mind you, this is a conference. There are no easy wins. We talked about teams over recent years that have really had to turn around. Houston, 
UCF, Cincinnati, Temple. Now this year, Tulane's one of the teams turning heads. Uh, this will be quite the finish uh, over the next month. Well, Jose Fernandez said it best. They just all keep beating each other up with, you know, without obviously UConn's in its own league, but everyone else is just beating each other up, can get a win any night. So it's, uh, they need another couple people in the conference, uh, teams in the conference to emerge. Remember USF last year went 19 and 16, came up just short of a seventh straight year of 20 or more wins under Jose Fernandez. But that was a young team, injuries, lots of excuses, and yet they didn't make excuses. That team still got back to the conference semifinals, a clash with UConn up in Connecticut. Well, you won't see Jose Fernandez make any excuses. He has a super young team right now, mostly sophomores, and he expects them to win. And, I mean, usually a coach doesn't put that kind of schedule together when, you're, you, when you have young players like he does, but he, he doesn't fear that. So I think he's frustrated that he didn't get a couple early wins and he had a couple bad losses at South Dakota State, even though they were a good team last year. You know, he, he expects to win that. Keith Adams there with uh, Ava Laskowska in her ear, a longtime assistant, and before that, a player of hers. Three of Keith's coaches on her staff are former players of hers. And that really is a credit to the head coach in Wichita. One of the things Wichita State wants to do is get ball reversal against this defense. It's a really good strong side defense, but if you break it down on the weak side and, and then penetrate middle, um, good things can happen. That's the fifth turnover right now for USF, and that's not what Jose Fernandez wants to see. Both teams, though, come away empty-handed on their last possessions. It was Maya Brewer last trip down, the Kansas City native, off the mark. And Shocker's still hanging on to a two-point lead. Shocker's on a little scoring drought of their own. About two and a half minutes right now. As the shot clock starts to wind down and the pass just well off the mark. You know, both defensive-minded teams, so you're going to see a little ugly basketball here for a while. Gonzon worked to Dubrovin Sova. Back to the Italian. And so many of these players in green have already suited up for their home countries, whether it be on the U-20 or on the full national sides. Second effort, third effort ripped away. Bethy takes a couple of steps, and well, when you're European, you might be able to take an extra <laughs> little hop to the other side. Well, that's a European step. <laughs> yeah. They call it the Euro step. So, yeah, that's that's what they bring to the United States. But that's I'd like to see those offensive rebounding drills that USF does in practice because they're tenacious on the offensive glass. It was 10-3, to now a 7-0 run for the Bulls to tie this one up. First time we've been tied since it was 3-0. Thought about it, would not go home. Yeah, it was a little touch shot. She needs to use the glass in that situation. Firing up another triple for the Bulls. This time it's Sidney Harvey coming off the bench tonight. Well, the number one three-point shooting attempted team in the league. So, I mean, you're going to see some fired up here today. 436 for the year. Sydney is now shooting better than 500 from beyond the arc this year. Well, half of these kids shoot better from three than they do from two. And Harvey's another injury story. Looked full strength here. Well, he's happy to have her back for sure. Um, she's, she was out the first 10 games and now coming off the bench, she thinks that she's uh, highly talented and a big, big part of what they're going to do. Free throws coming up for the Shockers to put a bow on Sydney's story. She had that microfracture surgery after getting hurt last April in Vegas at the USA Basketball three-on-three -three competition. Didn't come back until mid-December this year. But again, again, her shooting has been on the mark, though, when she has been on the floor. Keith Adams hoping that the Shockers can end the drought with some free throws. As much as you like those kids to play in those off-season things, that's what you yep. don't want to see, and unfortunately, that cost them a little bit. Second free throw for McCauley. Won't fall down. Robin Sova with the rebound. And a foul will be called here on Carla Bremont. Bremont last year. All freshman squad in the American. Was actually the leading scorer for Wichita State as a first-year collegiate athlete, but... Called for the bump there on Harvey. Good 
Plenty of time on the shot clock to work with. As the Bulls have finally established a lead, looking to grow it here. Pinzon. Well, that was, that was a nice back cut, and that's what they have to start doing. One thing that Wichita State's doing a great job of is playing the passing lane and making it difficult for USF to get in a rhythm. And uh, that time there was a little backdoor cut. She just missed her shot. You know, as good as the Bulls have been over the years, this series, although brief, belongs to Wichita State. The home team has won all three previous meetings. Now, of course, the last two years when they have shared the same conference, have gone to the Shockers here in Wichita and then the Bulls in Tampa last year. But uh, their first meeting was back in 1983. I don't think we streamed that game, uh, but that one went to the Shockers right now, giving them the edge in the series. Catch and release on the money for Bremont. Well, you know, watching Wichita State, if Bremont's hitting from the outside, good things happen to this team, and that, that's, a, that's a nice relief for them. He was back against UConn. She was 6 of 9 from beyond the arc. She can get hot. Just watch Wichita State and their defense, on the ball defense. Nice job dropping it down. Patience pays off. Count the bucket for Shea Leverett. And a free throw coming up for the junior. Well, this is a nice drive. Kept her eyes open and found the open player underneath. A mismatch there with Reed. Again, Leverett last year saw extended minutes with the injury to Beatrice Jordan. Well, that was one of the ways that you can beat this is because they're over-pressuring the ball. You've got to put the dribble drive down and attack the basket, and that's exactly what they did. But now you have some... More reliability coming off the bench after that experience last year. Stepping up for injuries. Shockers down by one with a little over a minute to go in this first quarter. Reed trying to direct traffic. The senior from Texas. And again, they just try to force it in into the paint against USF and it's not working. Yeah, ill-advised. Uh, they need to be patient. These are two good defensive teams. That's their priority, and that's what they focus on. So you're not going to give you anything real easy here. The Italian over one of her many, again, international options out there on the floor. This time the Spaniard. And a power dribble inside, and again, the Bulls finally starting to click. That time, it's just the good old-fashioned American out of Palm Coast, Florida, in Henshaw. Yeah, Christina had great dribble penetration on that, and that's what, where they're finding their niche here, lady. The last couple times down, they've been driving. And Henshaw, finally a senior, but great deal of success under her four years, a couple of NCAA tournaments and a WNIT. But really, she's the only elder statesman on this team with significant playing time throughout her career. Yeah, and Coach you know, said how proud he was because she's had as many injuries as any player he's ever had. But she continues to fight through it, show up, and be, you know, someone that's present. Even if she's injured, she just plays through it. McCauley here at the line, shoots one more, averages about 70% from the charity stripe. And a long rebound, hauled in by Henshaw. So Pinzon will hold for the final quality look here. Uh, Bulls up by three. Trying to free up Hinshaw. Fights her way through the double team. And time will expire. We've got a three-point ball game after 10 minutes of play in Wichita, Kansas tonight. Second quarter up next on the American Digital Network. We don't just predict the future. We shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be. We focus on what could be.
Otani scores three strikeouts in a row. Dominance for a fourth straight year. Cueto from 30. Unbelievable. And be able to celebrate this type of championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. Despite a slow start, USF able to battle their way to a three-point lead here on the road. Again, home team has won the first three meetings between these two programs. Welcome back. Before we get started with the second quarter, a chance to check back in with John Kurtz, court son. You guys have talked about the international flavor on this USF roster. Four of the top five scores are international players. That's a recruiting philosophy that head coach Jose Fernandez adopted when the American Athletic Conference came into creation in 2013. You might think it's hard with all these cultures blending together on the roster, but Fernandez says many of these players knew each other already from playing on the international scene, and it helps that some of the girls on the team can speak up to five or even six languages languages fluently. Lincoln? Yeah, among the languages many of them speak, as we saw in that first quarter, is the three-pointer, as three different Bulls able to knock one down from downtown. One thing about the Bulls is when they get set, you, you they're set shooters. They, they, they get their feet going. You've got to get them off the line and get them dribbling, and when their money, right there, as ultimately South Florida three for five in that opening frame as Robin Soba, Harvey, and Pinzon all able to knock down a three thus far. That has helped establish a three-point lead here on the road. So P Pinzon is 34% uh, from three-point and 34% from two-point for the year. So, I mean, why not shoot a three? Shockers only fired up one three in that first quarter. They did knock it down, of course. That was from Bremaw. That's kind of what we talked about early. Um, USF has won the battle of the boards. They have 13 rebounds right now and four offensives, so they're playing their type of game. And we mentioned at the start, the Bulls would like to perform better rebounding tonight than they did in that war on I-4 clash with UCF. McCauley mid-range baseline no gets her own miss she's in a sea of bulls that one too strong put back off the mark and a walk is called instead of a foul and Prince can't believe it well it's going to be physical in there and I'm pretty sure the Shockers just had a pretty interesting talk in there because she knew that they're getting out rebounded so these kids are going to be hitting it a lot harder I believe they had three offensive rebounds if not four on that possession but empty-handed. But the Bulls, they'll get this one back. I have not always been able to take care of the basketball. No, six turnovers is a lot for them here in the first quarter. But um, they just need to get a rhythm. Neither team really has found their offensive rhythm. A bullet pass inside. Angle was a little too tall there from Mununga. An offensive rebound, and there's the turnover. But it, it's caused by the defensive pass, you know, in the passing lane. Reed was in the passing lane. She wasn't going to allow that pass. And they, they just threw it without looking, and, and that's just careless. So a minute in, still looking for the first score here in this second quarter. Baseline was open, but no shot to be had. Reed able to regroup. Ultimately one and done. And finally able to come away with the points, Pinzon. Well, Pinzon did what she's supposed to do. She, she, uh, her defender went underneath the screen, and she attacked the basket. Then she missed a pretty easy crib and just stole it back. So good for her, not giving up on the play. Now rebound for Munanga. 
Both teams looking to make some changes off the bench at the next opportunity. Great defense there. And a walk before the drive from Jordan. Serafini's defense, she always takes the toughest player and she gives it 40 minutes of tough defense and that was a good example of how she plays the ball. See, Bremont just a sophomore but already feels like she's one of the vocal leaders for this group. Her experience with the U-20 national team for France. Keith Adams accused uh, her French sophomore of sometimes overtraining. Yep. She is dedicated. Yep, she has to get her to take a time on, a day off. So they're trying to get interior penetration there. There you go, but that's good collapsing defense inside. Robin Sova was able to strip it away, but last touch by the bull. Shot clock down to four. And Keith Adams recording victories against ECU, Tulsa, and Temple in their last three outings. Those last two here at home. The thing I'm impressed with Keitha is that she figures out what they're not doing well last year. And then she decides, hey, we got to get more offense. Let's pick up our defense and try to get a few more turnovers. So she knows that they didn't score a lot last year. And now they're scoring better. You know, they're, they're, shoes, they're scoring 65 points or more on average. And so their defense is creating their offense. Three more off the mark that time. Quickly firing one up to avoid a... Shot clock violation. And trying to draw contact, not helped out with any whistle. Sydney Harvey, the ball will stay here. Well, Bremont went in there and said, I'm gonna take it from you this time. You know, they took it from them last time, so she, she whipped that out of her hand. And nice job defensively there from Bremont. Able to put, or pardon me, it was actually, I think, the hand of Henderson that poked it away. And the moment you stick that ball out there, both of these teams defensively are going to swarm to it. Well, like I said, this is not going to be a pretty contest. It's, uh, it's going to be frustrating for the fans to watch a little bit because it's just not up and down and it's not offensive. It's... It's defensive. It is not the first grind that these teams have been put through early on in conference play. Nice mid-range pull-up by Carla Brima. Yeah, she attacked it and came off the dribble and had a great little look. And a foul on the other end here on the Shockers. It's amazing how many times I've seen US, USF not square up to the basket with their posts. They just took their time just a little bit more in the interior. But I think that's how they get those extra rebounds. They just throw some up and get it back. <laughs> We've seen uh, several offensive boards, both teams early on. Has not necessarily led to second chance points, however. Good dish. And Zahn's already knocked down 1-3 today. Reed stays glued to her. Still, Pinzon finds a little bit of daylight. Yeah, I haven't seen Pinzon uh, create and, and dish as much, but her offense has really picked up, and he said he she's worked extremely hard in the offseason, and you can tell that's a, that was a tough shot. Again, she's averaging a little under nine points a game, but she's coming off a career-tying 23 points in her last outing. A little offensive renaissance for the sophomore. Yeah, she was on fire. Speaking of pins on, that time off the front iron, and it goes right to Bremont. Nobody forces Bremont to stop until she's in the paint. Well, she's definitely in a zone right now, and they need to find her early and often because uh, her, she looks like she's on fire. Put up 13 points against UConn. Again, was the leading scorer last year for a brand new looking Shocker squad for Keitha Adams when she was just a freshman. Another turnover. How about a one handed tie up while you're down on a knee by Henshaw? Yeah. Teammate was telling her how to pivot out of that. It was kind of interesting. 
Yeah, she, she didn't really pivot. Henshaw kept that left hand on the ball. As Pinzon's going to get a breather. Still that three-point margin we had after the first quarter. Bulls shooting 41%, Shockers 32% on their home court, and the Bulls will not get another shot here. Weaving through traffic, kicking it out. And just won't go down for Reed. They've had some good looks. A walk on USF. And a timeout will send us to a break. 4.48 to go, a tight one in what has been a congested battle near the top of the American standings. One of these two teams will continue to climb. We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. Well, the Bulls are hanging on to a three-point lead just as they had to start the second quarter. And while they have struggled with turnovers, something that has kept them on top has been their ability to rebound here on the road. Well, the ability to rebound is innate. It's all in positioning and how you uh, focus on the trajectory, trajectory of the ball. They position themselves extremely well and uh, put that in their putbacks are there. They're a physically strong rebounding team. And I think he, th those are things he looks for when he recruits a player, is how physical they can play inside. Six offensive rebounds so far led to five second chance points for Jose Fernandez's women. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck, John Kurtz with you. Great to have you with us. Our continued coverage this year, 15 women's basketball games on the American Digital Network, already well into our schedule. And we've had some entertaining ones as we take a look at what is still to come here this month and taking us on into February. How about a trek out to Orlando? Memphis with quite the battle back the other night. Of course, Houston in action tonight against Cincinnati. We'll see Ron Huey's group against Coach Fernandez and the Bulls back home. Again, that'll be our last broadcast of January before we return back to Orlando. So uh, pretty soon we'll be able to vote, I think, in the primaries over there as residents of the Sunshine State based on our schedule. Definitely. You know, Memphis got that first win, which they've been looking for. They had a really good preseason and, and then got the win. So hopefully they can get on track. Look forward to some good weather. I know it got so cold in Florida last night that literally iguanas were falling from the sky. As Ashley Reed matched up with Chineke. But they weren't dead. No, they were not. Just cold. Good help defense there. Uh, they're very good on the strong side, like I said. So you can't, you have to shift them, counter them, and then attack them. You can't just take it one side and try to go against them because they're strong. Janeke, the freshman from Greece, just off the mark. Again, she has a twin sister shooting up for ECU, whom we saw the other night, Katarina. Both of them making their way over to the States, but getting different college experiences. Yeah, being a twin, I, I understand what they're doing. I mean, they both had their own goals, so they wanted their own colleges to go to, and it makes sense. 
both you and your sister on TV this week, is my understanding. Yes, correct. She's uh, on the family feud. Yes, it's quite exciting. <laughs> no spoilers. As 3.41 to go here in the opening half. And Shockers, despite some struggles, they've been able to force turnovers on USF. In fact, the Bulls have five turnovers the last four and a half minutes, and that has allowed the Shockers to stay close. Rima. Rima's hot. She, she needs more opportunities. He has seven of the 18 points for the Shockers so far. Remember that it's that interior line. That's the women's three-point line. That shot beats the buzzer, but won't go down. As the rebound hauled in by Henshaw. It's a team rebounding defense that they all go after the loose ball and go get it. Pins on, tied for the game high with seven points of her own. Trying to get teammates involved, including the freshman from Greece. Uh, but Chineke will throw it over to France there to Brima. The sophomore from 14, no. Brima says, if you're not going to pass me the ball, I'm just going to take it coast to coast. Oh, Pinzon, she whipped one in a little too hot to handle for L. Heads up play by Brima. The drought is over, and the Shockers are back within one. I think with the amount of international players on USF's team, I think Brima likes playing the style of ball. We mentioned how so many of these players know each other growing up, playing internationally. Janeka drops one in, and that will end a better than four-minute drought for the Bulls as they re-extend their lead to three. Uh, Shea Leverett success on the interior. Yeah, the Bulls had five turnovers over the preceding four minutes before that shot. Yeah, besides Brima, not, not a lot of people are contributing offensively. You know, one of five, one of two, one, oh of five. Um, everyone, everyone else on the Wichita State team needs to just settle down a little bit and focus on the shot. Ashley Reed back at the charity stripe where she's made three quarters of her free throws this year. They love Ashley, the senior who started at New Mexico Junior College, wraps up here with the Shockers, really echoes the coaches in practice, uh, a leader on the floor for Keitha Adams. Able to knock down the first one. Yeah, she has a great work ethic, and, you know, she does shoot the ball well, just hasn't really shot it well yet today. Yeah, just averaging four points this year, misses the back end there. So on any given night, she can go off for double digits. Driving on a pair of defenders, undeterred, Jordan. Well, that was quite the move by Jordan. You know, off the dribble with a little stab hook there and uh, end one. So very strong, physically strong team. Most of these girls are, you know, definitely have uh, the pipes to go with the game. Eight of 14 this year from the free throw line coming into tonight. Again, count the bucket. Just could not make it a three-point play. Plenty to talk about at halftime for both coaches, regardless of who has that advantage. Right now, the Bulls up by four with a minute to go. And a walk, the turnover from McCauley. Just to, again, we harp on injuries. South Florida's played eight. But we've already seen 10 for the Shockers as Keith Adams has just about emptied her bench. Well, one of the reasons why is she felt like her team wasn't good in the fourth quarter because she was, they got too tired. So she playing multiple people early and often and going deep on her bench in the first half. But B Baston is on the, on the bench because she has two fouls. And that really has hurt him here in the last few minutes. 
She has two, and again, Chineke on the bench right now with two fouls as well. You're only two players with any kind of foul concern here in the first half. Nice touch pass, able to regroup, I thought, there for a moment with the ball. But it slips away from Jordan. but they're going to say last touch by Wichita State. Well, they get a lot of deflections, Wichita State, because they're very busy with the hands. See the shot clock and the game clock. Catch and release from the corner, no. Offensive rebound from Bethy. Menunga pours in two more and stretches the lead to six. That's called turning your shoulder and uh, turning the corner. She, she got that shoulder down and she had one place to go and that was the hole. Shockers can essentially hold for the final shot here. Technically the shot clock is on, but Wichita State should be able to put up a shot before then and now it's a moot point with the foul from Harvey. I think Jose was almost out on the court for the sixth man on that set. He was trying to get him to give him a give it, get a foul. He still has all five fouls. Uh, inside, the DJ McCarty, the freshman. They have a couple fouls to give, so good coaching from the sideline. But it, the Shockers need to go north and south right now. Yeah, 5.5 seconds. They look a little bit out of sorts, and they need to put another point on the board here. Jose Fernandez is going to put the Spaniard Bermejo in, the freshman, because she has some fouls to give. And he will protect Robin Sova. Step back three to cut the deficit in half. No. And we will head to halftime with South Florida up by six, trying to put an end to a two-game skid and snap Wichita State's three-game winning streak in just a moment. John Kurtz will have a chance to track down Jose Fernandez. We'll hear from both coaches at halftime, but now our chance to listen in to the conversation with the head coach of the Bulls. John? All right, Coach, what were you happiest with from your team in the first half? Nothing. What needs to get better in the second half? Well, it's a very ugly basketball game, and I feel sorry for all the people watching this at home. Rebounding, please you at all in the first half? Well, you know what? I, at least we did that. But you know what? Both teams are just turning the ball over. There's no value for the ball. All right. Appreciate it, Coach. Best of luck. You got it. John, thank you very much. Again, we'll hear from Keith Adams before the start of the third quarter. Highlights and stats. We managed to find a few. We'll work them in here when we come back on the American Digital Network. We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, 
We don't focus on what should be. We focus on what could be. Halftime in Wichita. It's the Bulls able to battle back in that first half. The six-point lead here at the break. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck. Let's check back in with John Kurtz. All right, guys, I'm here with Wichita State University President, Dr. Jay Golden. I appreciate the time and Absolutely. joining me here. Jay, what, what's it been like taking in the basketball game tonight? Oh, it's been wonderful. I'm a huge – so as a child, I was a ball boy for USC basketball team at the same time that UCLA dominated. But at the same time, we had Ann Myers and you had Cheryl Miller and oh, yeah. USC-UCLA basketball was tremendous. So I just love women's basketball and being here for the Shockers is great. What's well, officially your first month on the job, essentially here. What what has that been like taking this over? Uh, like drinking from a fire hose. The, you know, it's been six in the morning to about ten o'clock at night, and the day goes by so quick. It's just been wonderful. The community has been wonderful. Campus is great, and our colleagues around the conference have been wonderful. When you do take over a job like that, is the first month spent more listening than, than doing, just trying to figure out what's what the lay of the land is, so to speak? Yeah, after you learn where the men's restroom is, it's just really just listening, uh, going around talking to our students, our faculty, our staff, and alumni and community, and just trying to understand what all the great things and learning about all the great things that are happening at Wichita State University. So it really is impressive type of things that are happening with research. We have continued uh, enrollment increases, which is bucking the trend. Um, and athletics is certainly uh, taking a prominent role, and it's just really exciting to be here. What are your biggest goals overall in, in, at the helm of this university? So I've made it very clear to everybody I talk to that my top priority is the student experience. We're going to have a diverse, inclusive environment. We're going to prepare our students for the jobs of today and tomorrow, and we're going to graduate students on time with the lowest possible debt. That's what we're about. And then the second part is we're going to be the catalyst for the regional economy and the economy of Kansas. What's your favorite part about being in Wichita? Uh, in Wichita, I think it's the people, actually. You know, my prior job was in North Carolina, and I thought the people were really nice there. The people in Wichita and in Kansas as a whole, they're just tremendous. They really make you feel welcome. Well, Jay, I really appreciate you taking the time. Enjoy the rest of the game. Well, thank you, and go Shocks. All right, back to you guys. John, thank you very much. And, of course, uh, the people of Kansas, one of the reasons why Keith Adams a few years ago decided to come back and take over this program at Wichita State. Right now, her Shockers down by just two scores against the Bulls. When we come back, we'll take a look at highlights and stats here on the American Digital Network. We don't just predict the future. We shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be. We focus on what could be. We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. 
halftime in Wichita as the Bulls right now in the driver's seat up by six. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck back with you. And while well, the Shockers early on established an advantage, Bulls were trying to catch up. The Bulls finally got the three-point touch from a few different shooters, but this has been a tight one as Jose Fernandez will remind you and probably reminding his players back in the locker room too many turnovers as you talk about the Bulls with 14 turnovers in that first half, but right now on the road with a lead. Well, I think there were a few good things that Coach could have been happy about. One of them was the 25 boards that they had, 10 more boards than Wichita State. And then they shot 44% from uh, two-point range and 38% from three-point. And their points in the paint, 18 points in the paint, they had some quality shots, so he should be a little bit happy. You saw in the highlights there, points in the paint, both Brema for the Shockers and Munanga, among others, for the Bulls. But you see the discrepancy. And even though the Bulls have turned it over 14 times, it has only led to seven points for the Shockers. You compare the benches as short as the bench is for USF. They've gotten nine points from their reserves, while Wichita State's only gotten one free throw made from its bench. When we come back, a chance to check in with the top Shocker in town. Keitha Adams joins us next here on the American Digital Network. We don't just predict the future. We shape it because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be. We focus on what could be. We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. Twenty-seven, twenty-one, right now. Bulls up on the Shockers here in Wichita again. Home team has won each of the first three meetings in this all-time series, including the last two years. Last year in Tampa, year before in Wichita. Take a look at what is coming up. We mentioned our tour up and down the peninsula of the Sunshine State as Memphis, Houston, and SMU will all head over to the Eastern Time Zone to collide with the Knights and these Bulls. A couple of weekends in Orlando, another midweek matchup featuring Jose Fernandez's squad, and then back to Memphis and Tulsa, where we'll see will Tulane be still undefeated at that point in early February, and of course UCF and uh, Tulsa as well, as that is our continued schedule. Before you know it, we'll start crowning championships for other sports here on ADN, but a lot of women's basketball still to look forward to here to close out January and all of February here on ADN. Uh, again, we'll hear from Keith Adams in just a moment when the Shockers reemerge from the locker room. But if you had to guess what the focus point was back there in the home team's locker room, what would you say? Well, I, I'm 100% sure that she's upset with the boards and that she needs them to shoot the ball better than they are. They're not really that aggressive. She wanted interior penetration for this game because she felt like that was the weakness in their defense, and I haven't seen that much besides Baston. She's gone a couple times to the hole. 
but the other guards are, are really taking the outside shots and not being aggressive. So uh, they got to shoot the ball better to win this game. On how much is the rebound edge going to USF? Because that was probably what was talked about for the most part for the past two and a half days after their loss against UCF and getting knocked out on the boards. Well, the rebound thing is, is big. Uh, obviously, you know, that gives them second chance points. The more second chance points you have, the better chance you have to win the game. So, uh, but I don't know if they were going to out rebound them, but they could do a better job than what they're doing now and in limiting their second chance opportunities. Again, for South Florida, Pinzon, your point guard led the way in scoring with seven points in her 18 minutes. We saw nine points from Bree Ma in her 15 minutes of action. Only two players, one for each team, really in any kind of foul issue. We did see Brabinsova pick up a second foul late there at the end of the first half before she was pulled off to protect her. But this game is 50-50 the rest of the way. Either of these teams, whoever wants it more, will be able to reach up and grab that victory. Either the Shockers will improve to 4-2 and two or the Bulls will be back on track at 3-2. and two. Well, the Bulls did a good job of getting nine points off their bench. But what they've had a hard time doing is closing out late in the game. So this, this you know, will Wichita State who has closed out a couple tight games and won buzzer beaters, uh, be able to keep this game close enough to be able to do that in the end. It is a USF team. We mentioned not only did they play the last two teams playing last year, Baylor and no Notre Dame, but eight teams on their schedule this year who were in the NCAA tournament. A big test. Had had some struggles in non-conference. Thought it would all click in time for conference play, especially when they started off 2-0 against Cincinnati and Tulsa but a nail-biting loss at Temple and then coming up short the other night. Meanwhile, just the opposite for Keith Adams. Her Shockers won three in a row coming into tonight. She's with our John Kurtz. Coach, what was the message to your team at halftime? Well, rebounding, uh, it's 25 to 15 on the board, so that's a big thing. We've got to rebound more. We've got to get out and transition more. We feel like we've got to pressure the ball and really deny and try to create turnovers and get some fast breaks. we got to get the tempo changed. Appreciate it, Coach. Best you of bet. luck. John, thank you. And yet there's a silver lining for both teams who really feel like there is room for improvement. If you're the Bulls with all those turnovers, you have a six-point lead. If you're the Shockers with all of your issues, including a negative 10 rebound margin, you're within two scores. Yeah, I think continuity in the offense is, is going to be key. The fact that the Bulls got 18 points in the paint gives them a really good chance of winning. And if, if Wichita State can get more points in the paint and, and get the ball to their post player a little bit more, I don't think they've had that many touches. Uh, that's what they need to do. So Pinzon will get things started. And again, one of the young Shocker fans. Happily sees Wichita State do exactly what Jose Fernandez was not wanting, and that was uh, getting a turnover there on the first possession. Valuing each possession is is part of the core of what he believes in, and, and when they don't, it just drives him crazy. Open look, but instead looking to drive the dump down right back inside, able to find Raven Prince. That's what I, exactly what I was talking about, getting the interior penetration and, and getting some points in the paint, and there you go. Right, it's Seraphine Bastin for a little creativity, and right on cue, Bastin with the steal. Well, there's that transition, turnover transition that Coach had asked for, and that's uh, get, igniting their offense right now. Now, does that score get Mariah McCauley started? The young woman averaging 13 points a game to lead the way for the Shockers, but a slow first half. I, I don't think it hurts. Uh, definitely getting a, a easy bucket is always a helpful thing. That gave her her fifth and sixth points. And they're going to get the bent forearm. Well, that's unfortunate for her. That's her third foul and uh, they really can't afford to have her on the bench. Now Chineke will sub out for USF. Able to get inside, a little power dribble up and good from Bethy Menunga. Well, I'm really impressed with her, her what, how she controls her body in space and and her consistency, he, that's one thing he's wanted her to do, and she looks very consistent tonight. He's undersized at six foot even, but still quite the presence. Back.
Baston sets up the offense. And going into the paint, but no purpose. Instead, transition opportunity the other way, and free throws after the foul on Bremont. Well, that was a great job of Christina getting out in transition and, and uh, drawing the foul. That's going to be the second whistle on Bremont. We didn't see many transition back baskets the whole first half, so both teams now are kind of loosening up a little bit. No, you often get those off turnovers, but we saw so few points off of the turnovers in that first half. Robin Sova off the front of the iron. Well, I like Robin Sova the first half. She did a great job of dribble penetrating, finding the open man, mixing up her game. Now, Robin Sova, we lump in as one of the great freshmen for the Bulls this year, but there is a question mark whether or not she will have four full years of eligibility. She did play an extra year of club ball before coming to Tampa that the NCAA may ultimately hold against her. Uh, but they are looking forward to at least three years with the talent out of the Czech Republic. Back on defense right now, the senior Reed. Trying to set something up here for Wichita State. Trails by five. Well, unfortunately right now, Wichita is one of seven from three-point range. So they really need to get some quality shots. And they just a bounce pass into traffic. Trying to fight to get it back. And this ball stays here with USM. A good hustle by Mariah McCauley just coming from behind and not giving up on the play. Here she is. She just, you know, pats it up and tries to steal it. Each of the Bulls' two losses now leading into this game have really come down to one or two possessions. You never know when a shot going down like right there from Harvey will be the difference. We mentioned she's shooting better than 500 this year from downtown. Well, that was a great set play from the interior where the big girl set the screen and the inbounder is a shooter. And again, Bremont. Well, they're coming on top of the screen and not behind it, and Bremont's attacking the basket. I think that's a crib that you wish you could have back. Christina was just a little, she outquicked herself on that crib and, and missed it, and that's, that's an easy two. No press. As Reed again. Out of Wichita Falls, Texas. It is reliably one of the hotter cities every summer in the Lone Star State. Can she get her teammates to heat up? Mariah McCauley again. Well, she's a gamer, and this is a gamer's drive right here. Got the body, got the contact, and won. That's her third and fourth points this half. We can add another. She isn't big in frame, but she's strong. And leading scorer this year for the Shockers. She now has nine points. Averages just shy of 13. Well, they brought her in to be the scorer because they realized they didn't have a lot of scorers. So, you know, they really want her to be the uh, premier player. Harvey knocked down a triple a moment ago, and Pinzon's going to be calling for the walk. Yeah, Pinzon took one extra step there, and you get that in Europe, but not here. <laughs> Chance to tie it with a three. Trailed by six at halftime. And they're going to call for an offensive push off with that right hand from McCauley. Yeah, McCauley didn't wait for her screen that time. And, and that's what you have to wait first till they plant the screen. And then you come off it. And she was moving. And that caused the foul. So another form of a turnover. A time for the Shockers. Reed able to close in on Pinzon. And how many times have we seen uncontested passes tonight not reach their intended destination? 
Well, it's uncontested in, in a way, but there is an arm in there that these guys are causing havoc with. So I, I think uh, they're just doing enough just to disrupt them. And coach doesn't like that, so he takes out the turnover. There's a little better movement for Wichita State than I've seen all game. McCauley for three. And the rebound finds its way to Bermejo. Freshman avoids the turnover. Midway through the third quarter, Shockers have been able to cut the deficit in half. And that was just off her own foot from Harvey. Yeah, behind the back dribble without a purpose isn't a good thing. Block as Bethy denies. That's the first block of the game. Not the first turnover. I mean, Coach Hernandez turned his back on that. Still looking for transition points. Second time, the charm from McCauley. She has 11. I think Coach Adams said it at halftime. Them getting transition points allows them to get that shot off quicker before the defense gets set. And uh, that's where they're a little vulnerable. It's a 7-0 run for the Shockers to pull them back within one. Deja Vu. Some themes carrying over into the third quarter. The Shockers making it now just a one-point ball game on their home court here in the third. We don't just predict the future. We shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be. We focus on what could be. Well, the Bulls have seen the Shockers go on a 7-0 run while the Bulls come out to start the second half with five turnovers over the last three minutes. 21 turnovers for this USF squad already. Well, one of the things Coach talked about coming in was value each possession. That was one of the keys to them winning the game, and they really haven't valued it. There we just, you know, she didn't square up and use her pivot foot. A lot of, a lot of no, look, no look passes where they're not really seeing the defense and the defense is in the passing lane. If you have to throw an up and over pass over the defensive hands, it's a bad pass. You need a direct line pass and they're throwing too many up and over passes and that's what's getting picked off. That one there was an inadvertent behind the back dribble which, he, which she didn't need. Depending on how you want to frame it, this is getting close to a season high or a season low in turnovers for USF. They had 23 against Mississippi State at the home of the Bulldogs, but this is the second most now on the year. And mind you, there's still uh, almost a quarter and a half to go. Well, the face right now that Jose has looking at that stat sheet, uh, I think uh, he's really focused on the turnovers. Um, and it's just something that you know, they only had 10 turnovers the game before that, so he expects them to do a better job than that. But credit, well, credit's due. Wichita State averages 20 a game for their opponents, and they cause havoc. Now, when the Bulls do get a shot off, they're shooting 47% compared to Wichita State, just shooting 33%. 
but McCauley's kind of got her game going. She's she's in double digits now, so just like you said, that layup that she had in the early in the game kind of has gotten her loosened up a bit. She and Bremont each have 11. That could change here, and Bremont's fouled going to the line. Pinzon is whistled for her first personal. Well, I think they've seen a mismatch between Pinzon and Bremont, and Bremont's got size. She has great abilities, and I don't think uh, Pinzon is as good of a defender, so she's taking advantage of it, and they're isolating that matchup. Eight straight points from Wichita State now to tie this ball game. Shooting five of eight. Good night for her. Good night for uh, Wichita State to have her play well. And the Shockers are back on top. Just our fifth lead change of the game. Wichita State only had a lead for about five minutes tonight, but it's been close throughout. I thought I might see Pizan be a little bit more of a facilitator here, and I haven't been seeing that in, in this game yet. Shockers fighting for that ball and forcing the turnover. 22 of them now. Well, that was Reed, and Reed, Reed's just a tough competitor. I mean, she she got down and dirty on that, and she uh, she has great leadership, and... She plays for defense. So again, back up the floor of the senior entrusted with the basketball for Wichita State. A leaner off the mark. A nice help defense there by Raven Prince as Pinzon couldn't use the crossover to drive. Wichita State's one of nine from three point. They just need to get shots off dribble. Like that's what's been really good for them in this game off transition and off dribble. The Shockers just have not been able to convert enough of these turnovers into points. Have not hit the iron yet. McCauley still hasn't hit the iron. That was nothing but net. Well, that's the first time they got the ball inside in the paint and then brought it back out, and, and then McCauley was open. So that's good inside-out action. She knocks down just the second triple of the game for the Shockers. It gives McCauley 14 points, including 10 alone here in the third quarter. Wichita State now with a four-point lead as USF being outscored 16 to six here since re-emerging from the halftime break. We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be.
12 0 run for Wichita State, but it's not even that the Bulls are missing shots. They haven't gotten a shot off in about three minutes as they continue to, again, just struggle to protect the basketball. That prompted the most recent timeout. Shockers on this run now up by four. Well, not only has Wichita State forced them to have 23 turnovers, but they've also had 12 steals. So that's a pretty dominating defensive performance. Their hand in the passing lane, their inability to allow them to reverse the ball has caused them not to be in sync. And uh, one reason they had this big run. Last shot from the Bulls came at the 644 mark here in the third quarter. It was a missed layup from Robin Sova. And this, in over four minutes, was the first shot they got off, and now a foul. We'll keep it this in. I think the other thing impressive about Wichita State, as we've talked about all of USF's turnovers, is that Wichita State only has uh, 10 turnovers. And you can say, okay, that's 11 turnovers. But they only had 10, 10 turnovers against Temple in the whole game, so they're doing a pretty good job. Pins on, took it to the hole. Another offensive rebound for USF. As Menunga. Harvey looking for another triple no. And let's say they simply have Sydney stepping on the line while touching the ball if there's a foul call in there. In that series, there were three up and over passes where the defender was in between the pass and there were three of them in that same series. This is just an out of bounds call. As I say, Harvey was on the baseline when she touched it. Well, Tamara Henshaw, she's, she's the meat and potatoes in there. She's the one making things happen. She's physical and she's keeping that ball alive. What a third quarter it's been for McCauley. Trying to pad her numbers with another. She's hit back-to-back -back triples. 17 points with a another quarter to spare. Well, I'll have to credit you. You said, is that layup going to get her going? And it sure did. Inside a minute to go here in the third. She had four points at the half. McCauley 13 here in the third quarter. Part of a 15-0 run for these Shockers. Look at the Shockers around the ball. Four Shockers and one USF player on the ground. A team again picked preseason ninth in the American. Toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the year-in and year-out leaders out of Tampa. Well, the will to win sometimes is underestimated, and they have a lot of will on defense. Well, step back three, no. Rebound for the Bulls, who now a seven-minute scoring drought here on the road. They, they really can't even make an entry pass. Renunga fires in a nice one. And now free throws coming up for USF. Sidney Harvey will go to the line. Well, that was better. They they got the ball off to dribble penetration and found the open post or guard, Harvey, off the back cut. Sydney's had a couple nice moments, knocked down a couple of triples in this game. Sitting on six points right now. Mentioned she was forced into that point guard role when Pinzon was unavailable. Well, she had an all-conference honors last year as a freshman. So she's not a big surprise, but I think just the fact that she was out the first 10 games, she's just starting to get her rhythm. That ends a 15-0 run for Wichita State. And she makes one of two. 
almost got the ball back. Good if it goes. Three quarters in the books. At halftime, is a two-score ball game, and it's still a two-score ball game. But going into the fourth, it's the Shockers leading 40 to 34. We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. you look at the third quarter it was 19 to 7 in favor of Wichita State they erased a six-point deficit at halftime and turned it on its nose Lincoln Rose Angela Beck back with you and a chance before the start of the fourth quarter to check back in with John Kurtz guys you can really sense how much the energy has changed down here on the Wichita State sideline that Mariah McCauley three had the bench as fired up as it has been all night in fact the bench turned back to the crowd right behind and got the crowd pumped up and into it. And Wichita State can sense how much their pressure is affecting things for USF defensively. Keitha Adams, Wichita State head coach the last time out, took one look at the stat sheet, saw the turnovers, and emphasized to her team, keep pressuring the ball. Lincoln? Yeah, Mariah McCauley had 13 of the Shockers' 19 points. They're in that quarter. And she started to really find a groove and was a big part of that turnaround. And we saw a few times a glimpse of that bench over there getting fired up with their teammates. Coach said she may not always make her shots, and but she's willing to wait because she's such a gamer in the end. She's willing to take that shot when they need it. I'll tell you right now, though, neither of these teams confident that this is a victory for them tonight. Who knows how these final 10 minutes plays out. I think that's a foul on Baston, and that's not her fourth foul, so could be a key moment here. She does a lot of the little things that you don't notice, and one of them is her defense, so not having her in there. Seraphine comes out with four points tonight. And now the Bulls starting to put some positives perhaps together. Back-to-back -back fouls on the Shockers. Count the bucket. Not just a good in inbounds play, good strong move. She did square her shoulders, took her time, and finished. As Menunga trying to cut the steps it in half. Three point play to start the fourth quarter. Mind you, that's equal to almost half the points they had all of the third quarter. And they scored seven. It's a no-look pass that probably could have benefited from looking. Yeah, definitely. Um, they were looking for the high-low. It would have been nice if she pulled through and just attacked the glass in that situation, but uh, she threw it away. Yeah, you needed to have purchased a ticket to be on the receiving end of that ball. <laughs> 
Kinzon had an assist the last trip down. Renunga drives, little reverse from Bethy, just won't go. And now the ball out of bounds, back over to Wichita State. Well, two good looks by USF to try to make something happen. So I like what they're doing. They're attacking the glass. They're getting the ball inside and getting some quality shots. Again, McCauley with 17 for Wichita State on the bench right now. Bremont with 13, second leading scorer for the Shockers, is out there with the basketball. Bethy Manunga, the only player in double digits for South Florida at the moment. Step in for a closer look, would not go down for Smith. Yeah, it was a good look, but it wasn't a strong take. And just kind of hoping for help there. No such luck for Pinzon. USF's credit, they get back on defense here. Down by one score. Rima able to keep it in play, dials up Smith, and Shia knocks down her ninth triple of the year. Well, that was a great look, and uh, she squared up and got a good shot. Does not fire them up very often. Keith Adams really thinks there's a high upside for the sophomore out of Oklahoma, Shia Smith. As Reed is stuffed by Mununga. Able to hang on to the basketball, though. Smith, no. My goodness. It's a free-for-all. Shot clock winding down. And even with the bench screaming at them, a little home court advantage to notice the clock was winding down, could not hit the iron. It's a turnover for Wichita State. And neither team uh, really having a good rhythm here. I think just settling down, getting ball reverse, and trying to get interior penetration or, or a feed to the post is what both coaches are looking for. It's amazing you have those moments where you just don't believe you can pause for a split second to just breathe. And it, we saw players struggle just to stay on their feet. The ball as slippery as ever. If they can both settle them. Well, USF just needs to take care of the ball here. They can't afford a turnover. We saw El Chineke come back in a moment ago. Right on cue. Again, one of your twins in the American. Several sets of twins in the American, but again, she and her sister on different teams. Her sister, a pirate. Shot clock down to single digits. Rima off the screen. Pins on, though, able to stay tight. They'll say that ball did scrape the iron and now free throws. That's a big offensive re rebound here late. They haven't gotten too many in this game. Curvin just was in there and nabbed it. Ashley Curvin, freshman out of Beaumont, Texas. She splits the defender and attacks him. Lots of potential there. Beaumont east of Houston. That ball east of the rim. 7-12 for the night. Only 58% from the free throw line. Not really what you want as a coach. You want your team shooting in the 70s. Upper 70s. That's why they call it a free throw. Over for 2. Both these teams have been given plenty of chances to run away with this ball game. That would be 3 if it went down. Will not for L. Renunga inside, and it will be free throws. Nice discipline by Shade Leverett, getting the defender off her feet. 
Yeah, good bounce feed. And right here off the dribble drive. And she scores up, pump fakes, gets, gets the defender up. Good patience by Shea. Shea 0 for 1 today from the free throw line, shooting a little better than 40% from the charity stripe. She'll sign up for your clinic, no doubt. It's a good one. A little flat, but she got the shooter's roll. You can tell she has a process. A time goes two for two. So slowly but surely, it's a one-point game here. And it's it's going to be the, whichever team has the ability to execute down the stretch. And that's been Wichita State so far this year. In the last three games, at least. Talkers lead down to one. It's been an 8-3 to three advantage for the Bulls this quarter. Everything but the bucket as McCauley took it to the rim. Robin Sova for three. Got it. Well, we talked about how impressive she's been all game. That was a nice take. She's off the dribble, high arcer. Both of her field goals have been from beyond the arc. She has seven points now. Has also chimed in with four rebounds. No uh, Wichita State players on the bench. I mean, uh, on the boards for that. Ryan McCauley is going to have a stare down with that glass next time she's on this floor in practice. It has not been giving her the kind bounce when she thought she has had the angle on a couple of missed layups now. Well, she's going in against some giants in there, and she's they're altering her shot. Pins on already, reclaiming the lead up by two. And Jose Fernandez doesn't know who to turn to. Janeka, the freshman in a foot race. L will go to the line to add one more. She created the turnover, created her own opportunity. And helping create some momentum for the Bulls, perhaps just in time. USF suffered a 15-0 run against the Shockers in the third, and yet here they are, out ahead, up by four. We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. as they are back on top up by four with a little over four minutes to go here in the fourth and yet another tight contest featured on the American Digital Network tonight 
And looking at that schedule, we should have a few more entertaining matchups on the horizon to close out January and kick off February as well. Thank goodness February has an extra day this year to squeeze in that much more basketball. Well, it's going to be fun, and it's going to be fun to see that Houston-USF matchup because a lot of the media was talking about Houston being one of the top two, three teams in our league. They've kind of struggled a little bit out of the gates, going two and two. So there's a lot of people in that two and two pack that need to kind of break out. So again, you count the bucket from Chineke a moment ago after she got the turnover and the layup. And looking for the free throw here as well. That's an impressive up and down by her. And that's a game changer right there. Puts these guys with their back to the wall. Six points now for L. Six lead changes. We've been tied on three occasions. We're talking about the Shockers who've had a 15-0 run. The Bulls have had a run more recently of 11-0. But now the team's led by more than eight. The Bulls an eight-point lead. Shockers a seven-point lead. This has still been a tightly contested contest throughout. Well, as a coach, you always say basketball's a game of runs, and whoever gets the most runs wins. And this has been a game of runs. There's been the quarter, third quarter, 19 points for Wichita, and now we have 14 points for USF and only three for Wichita. They pretty much have shut them down. Good to see Trajana Colbert was able to bounce back up a moment ago. Of course, we started the broadcast talking about Trajana, who has mitched, mit, missed much of this season. But now her seventh game back. And as you noted, had that game winner in the final six seconds against Temple to hand the Owls just their second loss in conference play. And then, then there's this young woman in her first year as a Shocker. Well, she makes it all happen, McCauley does. And they've, they've had Christina on her, who's a bigger player, obviously six foot two, or six foot, and McCauley's only 5'7", so it's, it's, it's making her shoot over that. So Coach, Coach has, has a really good defender on her, so she's had to earn all her points. 18 points for McCauley. Now, if you're the Bulls, you just want productive offensive possessions. Make sure you get a shot off each trip down. You're still shooting better than 40% tonight. And that will continue to improve. Add two more to the resume of Robinsova. Well, if they've run some sets, I haven't seen a whole lot of them, but that was a set play for an isolation in a backdoor because they were overplaying. So that was a great call from the bench. Nine points now for Christina. That was a big bucket. She comes out to defend McCauley. And Baxton will throw it away. There's been a lot of passing the ball to space, hoping a teammate will break in that direction. Yeah, it's kind of been the theme of the game. Would not go down. One and done. Uh, pardon me, no offensive rebound by Munonga there. Well, Wichita State did everything they needed to do on that play except rebound. So now it gives them another shot clock. Pins on. All of a sudden, the Bulls have matched their largest lead tonight. Well, they have tempo. They have rhythm. They're running some sets here in the late possessions, and it's impressive. Nice step through, but again, the Shockers not on speaking terms with the glass on the offensive end. Bremal with the block for now. Slow down, Janeke. Timeout with 2.08 to go. Again, a little game of hot potato. A moment ago, the freshman trying to make an impact in her first ever trek to Wichita State. Well, so far, USF has outscored all of their quarters. 17-point uh, production in the first, and now they have 18 points already in the fourth. So if you're a coach, you're really happy that your 
teams turning it on down the stretch. As I always want to thank both of these head coaches. We are very fortunate covering the American. Uh, so much to learn in each of our chats during the week with the head coaches. That includes, of course, Keith Adams and Jose Fernandez with their rich experience for Jose, 20 years here at USF. For Keith, uh, of course, all that success in Conference USA at UTEP before. Not many jobs could have pulled her away from that gig, but a chance to come back home to Kansas, where she grew up in Oxford, Kansas, and lead the Shockers certainly was attractive. But uh, I will say this, uh, good chat with Jose during the week. He, he had a few more words with us than he did with John maybe at halftime, but uh, we'll see if Jose gets another chance to chat with our John Kurtz here at the end of the game. I think Jose's level of expectation is very, very high. And, uh, you know, he just tells it like it is. You don't always want to hear what he's got to say, but if you're a player, but he, he tells the truth. There's a guy in San Antonio who has a similar way of operating. Now I'm seeing Pinzon, you know, really run the offense. She's keeping the ball in her hands and making good decisions. Whipped Again. in. Almost too good of a pass, but Robin Sova able to regroup in time. Well, Jone Fernandez has found, found something with this backdoor isolation, and they've done it two times in a row. They clamp down and able to strip the ball away from Colbert. A double-digit lead for the first time tonight for either team. Is USF going to be able to snap their own two-game skid and along the way and a three-game winning streak for Wichita State? The only win in this series between these two teams for the Bulls came last year at home. They're looking to become the first team to win a road game when these two teams get together. Well, quite a... Uh, unbelievable last three minutes to get a 10 point lead and 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 really have control of the game like they have uh, very impressive it is a 20 to 4 fourth quarter for USF with a minute to go this is after they were held to seven points in the third it's hard to believe that Wichita State only has four points but they just haven't had that many looks Dockers didn't want to foul. Instead, Pinzon was able to take time down off the clock, set up Mununga, but it could not add to the 10-point lead. Still a good possession in that it took the time down. McCauley catch and release. Banks one home. She'll take it. Timeout as the Shockers back within seven with 25 seconds to spare. A big shot. I'm not sure she called the bank on that, but when you're a shooter, it doesn't matter. She just fired it up and got the glass. Maybe a little bit too late, though. They just didn't have the offensive firepower here in this fourth quarter. Just uh, very flat. And USF had that transition going a little bit. And finally, Pinzon really orchestrated a, a really nice uh, fourth quarter. Third three for McCauley. She has 21 points. But at the moment, that's not enough. Time very much on the side of USF. Well, USF had so many other contributors. They have four, five, six players who are contributing. Really, McCauley and Br Brumont were the only two that really had big points. And then Prince had five points and Baston had four. But they've, they've got to score more points to be good. Well, Wichita State only got one field goal from its entire bench. Mind you, tonight... We saw seven players come off the bench for Keith Adams. It was when Shia Smith knocked down that three that she became the first and only shocker to knock down a shot tonight. Well, preseason, Jose Fernandez's team was ranked number two. So, I mean, this isn't a shock for them to, to win this road game. I think what's more of a shock is for them to lose a couple of the other ones. So... Um, he's getting his team rolling, and, and he's a winner. USF has a chance to improve to 1-0 on the year when they have 25 or more tur turnovers. We'll see if that gets added into the sports information director notes. Pins on. They'll whip it in. And back to a double-digit lead. USF is going to come to Wichita 
and find a road victory to get back on track, perhaps. And Shocker's not done just yet. Brema, 16 points, knocks down her second triple. 56-50. Well, it seemed like at various critical moments of the night, it was a six-point game. It was a six-point lead at halftime for Wichita State. And the final score is six-point victory for USF when it's all said and done. Just when you think you got Wichita State rolling with three games in a row, and then you have a USF team that only won one game on the road, they switch, they switch the script and, and get one on the road. Yeah, if somebody tells you they know how the Americans going to play out night in, night out, walk away. <laughs> yeah. This is always such an interesting league because there are teams that refuse to be pinned down to the low expectations, and they are looking to turn some heads. Tonight, though, the Bulls able to end a two-game skid and pick up a valuable victory on the road. Jose Fernandez is with John Kurtz. All right, Coach, what's you really got you guys going in the fourth quarter? Well, I thought we made the most out of possessions. We took care of it. You know, we took care of the basketball. We only took three shots in the first seven minutes of the third quarter because we turned it over so many times. That was the difference in the fourth quarter. Happier now than the last time I talked to you? A little bit. <laughs> okay. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. You got it. All right. Alisa, what's you really got you guys in front there in the fourth quarter and made the difference? I would say at the beginning we, we had too many too many turnovers. We had to value the ball more, and that's what we had done the first quarter. And that was the difference because we got a stop and we were valuing the ball. Instead, in the first three was get a stop and then lose the ball. So that was the main difference. And we, in my opinion, we defend more in the first quarter. But also in the first two was good because at the half court was just 20, 20, 21 points for them. So it was good. How does it feel just to come on the road and get a win like this? We needed it. We needed it because we lost at home against UCF, was our first loss at home, and we lost on the road too against Tempo, so we needed this win. I appreciate it. Congratulations, safe travels. Thank you very much. And again, Pinzon, she started this game looking like the same player who put up 23 the other night. She finished with nine points. She settled in in that point guard role with seven assists as well. She was on the floor for 38 of the 40 minutes tonight, helping guide the Bulls to a comeback victory on the road. USF now three and two right in the middle of the pack. It is going to be a fun month and a half still to come here on the American. We'll continue to follow it with our live coverage on the American Digital Network. Big thanks to our entire crew here on ADN in Wichita. For Angela Beck, John Kurtz, I'm Lincoln Rose. The Bulls battle back 56-50 the final score as they take the victory back to Tampa.